Pants, 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 pants. <laughs> and we are now live for episode two of Conversations from the Calm House. Uh, Today we are going to be talking about, um, oh my God, all uh, Holy Hogwarts. It's going to be all things J.K. Rowling. Uh, yeah, but first, all things Harry Potter is another separate. Right. Yeah. I mean, well, she birthed Harry. So that, yeah. Anyway, I, I'm Wadua, in case you didn't know, the AKA Dub Dub down, down below. <laughs> down <I'm> Quinn. Quinn. <laughs> What's going on, my friend? Oh, you know, uh, what the COVID? <laughs> what the COVID? Uh, what the COVID have I been up to lately? I uh, well, this week, this week's episode of our global pandemic, uh, I have made yet another batch of bone broth. It has been all the rage this season. It's the must-have item. Um, and today, this time, I since I had bones for both the um, beef and some chicken bones, I threw them all in together. Of course, the ginger makes it special, the apple cider, some vegetables. Uh, so I am now set for the next week or two, depending on how much I give away and how much I go through. Um, I feel like when we're talking about like broth that we should be speaking in the uh, in the podcast voices, like, well, why do I, when you're making the bone broth, let's talk a little bit about how the bone goes into the stovetop container. And what temperature would you say is the most appropriate for when you're making that? <laughs> <laughs> well, first we have to serve at the farm to table. I mean, it is the only way in the room temperature water, not cold. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like we're doing an episode of Portlandia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I miss that show. I miss that show. I mean, I know it kind of, well, as it went along, but a little humor right now would go a long way because, um, you know, bone broth is only so funny. So true, true that. <laughs> what in the corona are you? Have you been up to these days? This global pandemic season. Right. Um, let's see. There was a digital camp for uh, my youngest, um, who is learning how to monetize and program in Roblox, and you know renew everything so that was kind of funny but i think i think they had fun um you know we're back in new york which i feel crazy i feel safe being here because i feel like people are listening to the governor um whereas in north carolina it was just a for all shit show but like people here are i think loosening up a little bit like you know we've been invited to backyards um you know but there's still just like a, just a common sensibility of, you know, let's all be careful. So is that what you're going to be doing this weekend? Doing some, some backyarding? This yes. Holiday weekend? We are, we are backyarding. Nice. Um, I, Bailey and I will be hiding out from the fireworks because um, even though they're illegal, uh, they're also all the rage this, this season. And hopefully, um, we will not have to be running from any fires. Um, but I will say that there was one that went off the other day that just, uh, you know, maybe it reminded me of that scene in the Hunger Games when Katniss blew up the stack of food and she's blown back. I mean, I understood now why you would be blown back by sound like that. I, I don't know if they were in the alley behind the apartment or whatnot, but it was just like, and I felt like the side of my face was just blown off. And oh. <laughs> A little ringing in my ears, and poor Bailey was um, was shaken to his core, as was I, because I was just like, I understand now why you, you would have, you know, you would be disoriented after a loud sound. So I can only imagine. I'm I, I'm I'm just anticipating uh, more of that over the next couple of days. So unfortunately, <laughs> thank you, COVID. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you for keeping us back at home. But um, yeah, so. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I'll let you know how this bone broth turns out, and um, I'm glad that Ren is rocking the robot knowledge. Yeah, it's a good time. So what what are we? Uh, well, first of all, what are, what are we for? We we jumped right in. We didn't say this this podcast is about. <laughs> 
this conversation. I'm just so excited so to be talking to you that I forget all the other stuff. Oh. You have to like just pretend like you're at your aunt's in the south. You got to bring people in and tell them why you're here. Thank you for coming to uh, our conversations uh, uh, from the compound. The idea is that uh, it was born out of um, our desire to build a compound to survive the zombie apocalypse, uh, which we've been talking about for years. Yep. Uh, and uh, these conversations will take on all different flavors, all different you know, topics, creeds, colors, nothing is safe. Um, we love, it'll be tough stuff that we would be talking about if we were just sitting locked up in the compound, keeping the zombies out, you know, you want to talk about racism? We got it. You want to talk about culture, pop culture? We got it. What else we got, Quinn? Uh, you want to talk about music, books, movies, sci-fi, um, race relations, parenting, uh, and that's for both children and animals. Um, cooking, um, all kinds of stuff. Eventually, we're going to have some guests on here too. Yes. But yeah, you know, we're we're working out the kinks so for ourselves. So thank you for being with us on this journey. And um, uh, yeah, like I said, this is uh, this is episode two. Uh, last time we got together, uh, we uh, was was a dream come true, really, because we had been talking about doing a podcast um, for. I think even longer than we were talking about the compound. <laughs> so. And what's interesting about you is last week's episode, kind of the core theme was Juneteenth because that was the day that we recorded it. And what's interesting is that today's fundamental topic, Harry Potter, both of those things are part of my life because of you. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, well, thank you. Thank you. I, like to spread the love, spread it around. <laughs> and um, we're, we're going to get into it and talk about our love of Harry Potter. And, um, and I actually have to give it up to my, my good friend and my long lost roommate from the days of old Jonathan Miller, who is the one that put it on my radar. But um, yeah. And yeah. So before uh, we get into that, let, I guess we got a little, or do our little segue into the collective compound. Mm -hmm. This was Quinn's choice because we used to listen to this song, this whole CD back in the day when we shared an office in the days of old. The before Kanye went crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's actually not morning. Um, I am in California. Quinn said she's in New York, but uh, but we make it work. It's our morning. It's our it's our. Yeah, just whenever you're listening to it, it's good morning. Fresh is the morning. <laughs> Fresh is the morning breeze. Uh, but yeah, so like as we've been teasing, um, you know, let's let's talk about a little. Uh, let's talk a little Harry Potter. Yeah, I, um, as I mentioned, my uh, my good friend John, I lived with when I lived in San Francisco years ago, um, and he is such an avid reader, and so you know, I really trusted his opinion about books. And I think around the time I fell into it was um, shortly, it was right before September 11th. Um, so these books were a great escape. Um, it might have been before that, but I do remember devouring these these novels during that time because it was just, they, was, they were so well written. Um, I love the message of them. I, I, am, I didn't care what kind of nerd that made me. You know, I bring the book in to work, you know, as I mentioned, Quinn and I share an office. And Quinn, what was, you know, what was, you, what was your response back then? <laughs> um, I was super Harry Potter racist. Um, you know, I, in San Francisco, I worked with a group of really smart and, and wonderful women at a tech company, and they were all crazy Potterheads. And I thought that was this lame. I was like, that's just lame. You guys are lame. You're reading children's books. You know, like you guys are a bunch of dorks. I was so judgy. I just wanted nothing to do with it. It was so stupid. And I, you know, cut to five years later and, um, and I met you. <laughs> and no offense to my friends that 
were reading it five years earlier that I did not take seriously. I took she was not seriously. woke. She was just not woke. Not and, Harry Potter woke then, at all. And then she fell under the uh, the spell as we all did. I mean, I I was one of those people that I, I think you know like. I would feel the pain between when the books were being written and we would have those long stretches because she's writing these big, these big books, she being JK Rowling. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I do believe I went to a, a Barnes and Noble or Borders at midnight at one point when one of the new books dropped because I am that level of nerd. I'm not afraid to admit it. <laughs> but the, I think the biggest coup for me was uh, years later when, uh, when Quinn's oldest child started oh. reading books. I became the super hero, hero. Yeah, that was cool. That was real, a real connecting point for you and Jaden. That culminated with a birthday trip to Universal Studios. Yes. In Harry yes. Potter land. And I God. think, yeah, I know, I think, uh, well, if you wait for it, I think I might even have have a picture uh, of a, of all of us. Let's see. If we can I do. do. I have one in the kitchen. I can go grab it. You can grab it, or we can just do the sheet. Yeah, she's gonna go grab it. And while she's doing that, I'm gonna share my screen because because I can because I can share it. Maybe share share the screen. And here comes our picture. Okay, <laughs> Oops, wrong way. So that's JD in the middle in the full Hogwarts gear. That was a great day. That was an amazing day. Amazing, amazing. It was amazing. Okay, I'm gonna get out of this because I am not. I got lost in the in the in the matrix. Ooh, what are you right doing now. over there? Ooh. I was trying to like tee up, you know, like how I shared before, but I, um, yeah, I, I'm lost in the matrix. So we'll we'll do this another time. But especially since I'm you already shared the matrix, the matrix. <laughs> I was I am lost in the matrix. You see all the screens? You see all those windows? I, I couldn't get it. <laughs> um, then we'll just go back. And oh God! Speaking of the matrix, we need to do an entire episode on Sense Eight. Oh. Yes, that that is in our matrix of okay. topics, you know, because that is that is my religion. But um, okay, but back yeah, to Harry. Harry, yes, back to Harry. So, what was what was like the things that you love the most about Harry Potter? Good one over evil. Yes, yes, good one over evil. I loved how they were all about you know community and friends. Like you're stronger together, which is a message that we cannot hear enough especially right now in this day and age, uh, in these current times where we're being divided. Um, and also people speaking up, which I think is a is another, you know, timely message that people are coming into today with, with um, Black Lives Matter and um, just people- Dumbledore's are, Army. Yeah, yeah, Dumbledore's Army and just people speaking up and being willing to, to talk and, and learn. Um, so I, you know, those are, those, you know, were just some of the beautiful things in, in, you know, in addition to it, just being a great way to get lost, you know, in reading for a while. And then, you know, unfortunately we got to fast yeah. forward to uh, recently, what was it last year that things started turning or was it last year? The first the was, um, I think in, in JK's essay, she was saying she, meant to mark a Twitter account and instead liked a tweet by that woman who I want to say like lost her job because her thoughts around transgender people. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay, wait, wait, we need to take a moment. Okay. Like, because there's, until like, I, cause we're going to go into a dark place. Okay. But let's just stay in the light a little longer because in that light was so many days and nights of geeking out together on Harry Potter. So many, like we would sneak out cause our office was in Santa Monica and they have the sickest <laughs> movie theaters there. And we would go on our lunch 
<laughs> I go watch the Harry Potter movies when they came out. And then we'd spend like hours like breaking down like the scenes and the and this and that and like you know, just there's there was such a huge part of our life that was in the sunlight that is the Harry Potter body of work. Like whenever it's on TV, I turn it on. I'll watch all the movies back to back. Uh, uh, anytime, anywhere, there's always some new great message that like I hadn't heard before. It's like one of those things that like if I was alone on an island, like these are the movies that I would watch. Like it's, it's this is a set of books I'd bring with me. Like, you know, there's there's so much good, beautiful, amazingness that is the body of work of Harry Potter. And I will have to work very hard to separate that from the person who wrote them because the person who wrote them, who was capable of the most amazing inclusive language and stories has completely fallen apart. Yeah, and I, you know, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it's, it's abs, it is like as high, as my arm high, as this, as it brought us, her actions as a human are like, it's yeah, it's like somebody waved a magic wand over her and turned her into a devil. Um, yeah, no, I mean, and, and to that end of you know, like staying in the light a little bit longer, you know, like, um, we were all fighting with her to fight the good fight when we when there were those other voices talking about how evil the these books were, and <laughs> at, <laughs> at the time, there, there wasn't uh, there weren't other books that stood out there that have this this momentum and this you know that caught people's attention with you know and just the the, the groundswell that it had behind it that had the, the that also had great messages you know um i think you know the other series that that was the competing series at the time was twilight which are two very different stories and uh and people like oh it would lump them in together the haters you know they're like oh it's all witches and you know, vampires and all that fantasy crap. And it's just like, no, you know, the different worlds and go get out of my sandbox because you don't know. Um, <laughs> and you're being ignorant right now because, you know, any any story that is about, you know, that rallies togetherness, that that teaches people patience and humility. I mean, it, it is, it, it's, it, you know, Harry's character is very much why Spider-Man is my favorite superhero. Because yeah. he has a gift, but he's not out there just like flashing, like I'm Superman. I'm, you know, I can do whatever I want to do. You know, he's he's humble. He does it in a way because it, it, you know, things that need to get done because it's the right thing to do. And I, you know, so you know, I, you know, also I was, you know, taking a look at at J.K. at that time, you know, knowing that she was a single mother um, and had been on welfare and um, had children and. You know, started writing this, the, the 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 series, and and you know, and me, the nerd in me, the, the creator, just knowing that she had arc, arced out this entire series and of books over, you know, that even she hadn't written, and just this the you know all the the side pieces that came off of it, like MuggleNet and you know dictionaries that just you know for this new terminology. I mean, like this woman was a badass in my head, you know, and just a creative force of nature that was doing good in the world that at that time that needed to be done. So um, I was, I threw my full weight behind her. I threw my full weight behind those books. I loved our, our lunches slash meetings that we, you know, we had to have <laughs> when we disappear and get out of, get out of the office. And, and I loved our quality time together, especially um, I, one of the last um, times that you guys were here um, during the summer beach house, um, Jaden was actually old enough to watch the final Harry Potter and, and, and she and I stayed up. I think we were up until midnight or one o'clock finishing the movie. Everybody else had gone to bed, but you know, it's like, we were just like, yes, it's time. And I, <laughs> been this entire time. she's old enough now. I'm, I, I don't know. She's what? Third, 14? 14. 14 now. So I had been waiting almost 14 years for her to have this moment. And so it's one of my favorite moments together besides us all going to Universal. I love it. So I refuse to give up that in the poop show that is her today. 
Um, and I'm, I'm glad to see that um, people like Daniel Radcliffe um, and others that have been a part of that universe have are also distancing themselves and trying to keep that safe, protected space. And I, I'm super glad uh, and a super nerd that I got to meet Daniel Radcliffe <laughs> at some point. Um, but yeah, uh, I, it, I am holding on to the books. Um, the wand that you saw is not my wand. It's um, a forgotten one that I hope to return to somebody. Um, they were house sitting for me uh, right when uh, COVID hit. And so I haven't been able to uh, give them back their wand. Um, <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> truth. That's the truth. It's not mine. I shouldn't even be waving. I shouldn't have taken it out of the box. It's still, it's like in its own special box here, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, so like I said, you know, she was a, I mean, you know, look at, she released like seven books between 1997 and 2007. Um, and I think at one time it was projected that she had sold more than 14, 450 million copies worldwide. I mean, like she, as a writer, became one of the most powerful, celebrated and wealthiest writers, you know, and that's behind people like Stephen King, Danielle Steele, and John Grisham. Um, uh, I think she also got the accolade of being the first author in the world to hit the billion dollar mark. But I guess with great money comes great um, losing touch with reality. <laughs> well, she has done some pretty powerful things with her money, right? So, um, she has several charities and things that she does. We can break that down. Uh, but unfortunately, it is all undercut by her take on transgender people and what is happening in the transgender world. And maybe because she has all this money, she's got a lot of time and has decided to I don't know, talk to people, get to know it. I don't know, but it's it's one of those things, Wadua, that like, I don't know, my dad used to say something along the lines of, and I'll misquote him, but he used to say like, there's a lot, there's like, there's nothing wrong with getting educated on something and part of that education is realizing that it's not your place to speak on it, right? So like, and I feel like in the Black Lives Matter movement that it's on white people to get educated about the history, about the movement itself, about why now um, and why then. But in part, as part of that education is learning, it's not our place to say anything except how like figure out ways to support right yeah. so like but being part of the conversation not our place um and so it's i think in reading the four thousand words she clearly has taken a lot of time to inform herself and to get informed but hasn't been educated in terms of understanding that it's it's not i think we talked about this is not her table to sit at Right. So what she's doing there, I don't know. And she kind of tries to make it about like, well, I have all these nonprofits, all these causes, and the transgender movement is going to impact causes. And that somehow makes it okay for her to be part of a conversation that she really has no business being part of. Um, and yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm like you, I, I don't know where, I mean, like, from this, this trove of, of all this goodness, you know, I mean, like, we didn't even talk about the fact that, you know, how she championed for women when Hermione and having that strong female co-pilot to Harry, I mean, there would be no Harry Potter without Hermione. And so for little girls to be able to see themselves and, and to know that they can be superheroes too, and, and affect goodness in the world. So to, to, you know, maybe, you know, it is a matter of time that she's now not focused on these. I know she's doing other writing under her pen name, but um, it is, it, it is, it's a serious blow. And, you know, for somebody with such a powerful platform and powerful presence in the world, who isn't a very public person, like why come out on this? Why now? You know, I don't, 
and especially from a place of, of, of misinformation. Um, and, you know, like I, you know, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an elder lesbian, you know, so I can remember even, you know, being dragged to, and I was literally dragged to um, Michigan Women's Festival. <laughs> And I, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I think it's gone away at this point, or at least maybe it's trying, been trying to resurrect it, re resurrect itself. But, but I was there toward the, toward the tail end of that whole lesbian experience. And the big conversation there was, was women born women, and they didn't accept trans women into the space. And so, me, you know, like being fresh off the boat and just trying to wrap my head around, you know, I'm from South. We just all piled in one room and we're like, hey, everybody. You know? So to have all the divisions and hear the different conversations going on, you know, I, I liken some of what she's talking about in terms of like women and women who bleed and, and drawing those hard lines in the sand to those female voices in the LGBT community, these, these lesbians, older lesbians. Um, I mean, at least they're in the community and, and we've come a long way since then. I mean, even talking about how the L word, you know, tried to, you know, in the first first um, iteration of that show had a trans character and, you know, and that storyline was told through the eyes of, of the lesbian experience. And, and it was a similar thing where, you know, Pam Greer's character, Kit, is telling Max, you know, like, don't do this. And why, why can't you just be the butch's butch? Like, it, you know, like you were saying, like, it's a choice, you know, um, and, you know, and, uh, and it was, it was being portrayed as a bad thing that, that Max was giving up, you know, their, their, their womanness to become a, it's not a choice. I know, I know, I know, I'm telling you what, what I, what I've seen I, it is, but it's so not a choice. And in any way, the way that I don't get to choose if, you know, if I like women or not, I just, it just is, you know, <laughs> It's the way that, that we're, we're both women, we're born women. I mean, like, or that's, you know, that's not right. In the way that I'm born black. How about that? <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> trying to make it about you too, but um, we'll find something else. But um, seriously, it's not my conversation to be part of. What I do want to be part of is breaking down the fact that JK Rowling has no business being in, part in this conversation. Yeah. Um, it'd be like, yeah. Um, and, and I think what, what breaks my heart are the ways that she's trying to insert herself in the conversation and be justified in. Um, and, it's, and it's these arcane approaches. It's kind of like, you know, uh, um, kind of like, you know, if women had a chance to become men, to have a greater role in society or more power, that they, that would be the motivation behind choosing it. Yeah, and it's well, one that's that's not true. But also, in the let's say let's say someone does not her place. It's not her place. Like, no. what does that matter? Who cares? Like, I guess I'm not. It, I think if what I read in the undercurrent of all of it is that she sees transgender one as a choice and two as a cheat. It's a cheat, and three is a threat. To your point and earlier. Yes, and as, as a threat. Yeah, and I mean, and now <laughs> she's she's embracing TERF, which stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist, the way that people are embracing MAGA. You know, even though oh the both, even though even though both of those types of movement represent some kind of hateration, you know, uh, an exclusion and. Yeah, it's it's terrible. I mean, like I, I, you know, I had so much more respect for her, you know. And then somebody can say, you know, she's got a right to express herself, but go express herself in in her own little corner of the world, you know. Don't be bringing that hateration, throwing it on on this fire, you know. Because I don't, I don't agree with that because I think she's been she's been famous long enough to know that anything she says or does has tremendous reverb on a lot of people and a lot of young people. And so that's when I really, when I really get angry because I have an 11 year old and a 14 year old who look up to her. And it's an, it's one of those things where it's not her place. It's yeah. not, if, 
like if she wanted to do the right thing, she would use her platform and step aside and say, here are the three leaders of like, here's uh, Jean Malpin who runs the Gender Family Project at the Ackerman Institute. I'm gonna give him a platform to speak. You know what I mean? Like, step the fuck aside, step aside. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I I didn't say I felt that way. I'm saying, you know, there's always those days. They're like, well, who are you to say? You believe what you believe. Let her believe what she wants to believe. But now I agree. She's to her power, you know, give her platform to somebody else. I mean, I saw an interesting thing um, with actresses, you know, giving their throwing their their um, their social feeds to other act, you know, to um, to black actresses. You know, so it would be like a I know I can't, I can't remember all the actresses that did it, but I thought that was so awesome. You know, I, I think um, what's her name that's been in everything. She's like the degrees of Kevin Bacon. Redhead that oh, was in no, no uh, I think she did it too, but she was in the Hunger Games. She played Coin. Oh, uh, more. Yes, Julianne Moore. Moore. Yeah, yeah, and people like that who are, you know, really visible and out there, and 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 passing the torch, like you said, giving you know, sharing that their platform to show that that unity and that that alignment. I I agree a hundred percent. She should shut the fuck up. Sit down, get out. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> you know, I think get I can, your knee off their necks. Yes, get yes, please, please. I, you know, especially when I think that, you know, she has received different awards from like organizations like GLAD or HRC or you know, and it's it's just it's sad that you know to have this moment now where it's like, oh, you're actually not an ally. You're actually really doing some serious harm to people. I mean, like trans community you know we just i think it was june the week before juneteenth that you know that rights were rolled back um uh, for trans folks for you know within the for health access to good health or access to health care um and you know i think that same day that there were the remains of yet another you know trans woman of color who was who's whose you know remains were found dismembered and a river or something like, or a lake. Um, that's some Jack the Ripper shit, you know, and it's 2020 and, and, and words of more, is she, of all people, she, that's why she wrote her books talking about the magic of words. Words have magic, words have power. And so she, like you, she, I agree. She is wielding this power and using her, the power of her words on responsibility, on uh, un, unresponsibly and, and it's hurtful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, man. Have a message. Sit down. Step aside. And walk away. Like this is not your topic. It's not your place. Like, and I, I think maybe just like. Like uh, there's, there's, you remember we were talking about the, like, what would Harry Potter do? Yes. Right. Like get a, what would Harry Potter do tattoo? And as you are experiencing the pain of that, think about what your own character would do in this situation. <laughs> yeah. Basically go read your books. Go reread them. Yes. <laughs> go read your books. Uh, okay, I've had enough JK. I can't take JK anymore. I know. I was going to end on, you know, just, just the fact that, you know, like you, like me, you know, like the other fans of Harry Potter, um, we are all rally. I mean, like separating ourselves from the magic and the goodness of of that body of work from that person. And um, the Leaky Cauldron and MuggleNet and other places are no longer linking to her publicly. And um, and uh, they had, you know, the Leaky Cauldron said that Rowling had expressed harmful and disproven, disproven beliefs about the transgender community. Um, Daniel Radcliffe, even um, in a letter that Daniel Radcliffe uh, published and wrote that was published by the Trevor Project, you know, this is a good message for us all and a good place to end on. To all the people who now feel that their experience of these books has been tarnished or diminished, I am deeply sorry for the pain that these comments have caused you. I really hope that you don't entirely lose what was valuable in these stories to you. 
uh, I'm just gonna add the experiences around those stories, like going to movies, like geeking out with your you know family of, of choice. Um, if these books taught you what that love is the strongest force in the universe, as it is, then that is between you and the book that you read, and it is sacred. So say it's Daniel Radcliffe, aka Harry Potter. So thank you, thank you, Potter. Potterhead. Potterhead forever. Potterheads forever. <laughs> so you know, uh, speaking of that, next, I mean, like, well, because Trevor Project represents, uh, you know, a safe space and a great organization for the that next generation and people finding community and help. Um, like we were talking about well, who's next. I mean, like, we, let's close the door. Yeah. Close the door. You know, done with J.K. Who is the next? Come out. We need to see you. Like, have you seen anything that's been out there that, yeah, I mean, or even maybe let's even think about what that could look like. I mean, like, what's a, the voices, the stories that we need now? I mean, it's, it's kind of cool because you never know, like, what, what voice it's going to be. And I think, you know, the fact that JK was the first billionaire woman writer, like, you know, if you think about, like, the big, you know, like back in the day when you could go to airports, yeah. you know, if you look at the wall of books, they're all white people, right? Like every now and then there's an Asian writer or a black writer who kind of breaks through, but I would love to see more diversity in that respect for those like blockbuster mind bender generation defining narratives. Um, you know, so I think, you know, it, here in our house, um, the hate you give was like a big thing. It was, but it wasn't like a, um, like a wrinkle in time, you know, right. it was more like, you know, just a really heartbreaking and well-told story of a, of an experience. Um, yeah, I'd love, I'd love something like that. I love, I love like dragons. Um, I was just explaining to Rin uh, the mist of Avalon. Mm. I was like, God, you know, because because Rin's been talking about Wiccan. She's thinking, or they're thinking, like, I, I might want to check out this whole Wiccan thing. And I was like, Well, I got to get smarter on that. But I do remember this really cool book called The Mists of Avalon, and I need to see if you're old enough to read it. Thank you, CommonSense.org. <laughs> um. But you know, something like that might be kind of cool. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm i like, you You know, like I was, a, I'm a fan of um, coffee will make you black and ain't never gonna be the same full twice. I mean, even just taking it out of the, the fantasy world, which I still love. I mean, I, I love uh, Interstellar Pig and, and, you know, but I'm also dating myself because these are older books, but I think you know, stories from different people, you know, but also, mm -hmm. you know, that look, look like me, look, look different than JK. Uh, Cause there are people out there. There's plenty, plenty of people writing. And, um, you know, I'm, I was truly inspired just getting to know this organization called Right Girl um, because um, just the, the little bit of, of time that I've spent with these young women aged 13 to 18 you know, like I'm excited for, for their stories. Um, and I'm excited to see what they can come up with. And, you know, the last little nerdy bit, I mean, just cause the other night while I was working, I had, you know, on TV, the freedom riders came on and, um, you know, I, I think about, you know, what kinds of, you know, different voices, different lives. I mean, like what things that could come to life just from people being given a chance to have their own platform to tell their stories. Um, and I'm a big, supporter of that. big believer. Big, huge. Yeah, but I think to your point, to find the the next great generation defining uh, series of books, um, there needs to be more voices at the table. Yes, right? like you know, there's a there's a seven year old non binary, you know, black kid who has these has has the idea the idea is there but is never given an opportunity is never fostered and it sits there that's happened millions of times over right so 
I love I love your point about like let's all dig in and make and clear the path for more yeah. voices because that that story's in there. And I, I think uh, just going back to what you were saying earlier, we'll we'll drop the be sure to include the link for common sense. Uh, dot org and also now that I'm ta now that we're talking about this I'm like I think a, a while ago maybe a year or two ago I sent you a, a some a link a, I mean a list of different books um, for, for younger kids I mean not younger kids but for um, that might be good for Ren that were young adult or not just Ren but Ren and JD that were young adults oh, yeah. um, so I'll I'll try and dig up that that one and uh, and share share it as well. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So let, anybody else has any ideas? You know, when this goes live, and watch, drop in the comments. <gasps> What's going on back there? Oh my god, dude! I have like a house full of kids that just showed up, and the and the uh, I think the gardener next door just showed up, and is like, uh, it's and all the windows party. are closed. I don't know how to make it any quieter. Hi, Jackie. That's my nephew. Hi, Jack. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> So, anyways, well, well, we are we are almost done here. We are we have a our, uh, whoop, whoop. our new yeah. segment, our newest segment, and we are. Very I'm excited. really excited about. I'm really excited about this. As as tragic and stupid and terrible as it is, I'm excited about it. We'd like to welcome you to KK Karen's Corner. And sometimes can, sometimes and it looks like can. the occasional but, can. But right it now, seems it seems like middle-aged white women are just out there in force, and they are not giving up, and they're holding ground on this land that is is totally theirs. <laughs> oh so let's man! Let's talk about Karen's corner. And let's I'll talk about Karen's. So if yeah. you uh, so because Karen because uh, Quinn, not Karen. Sorry, Quinn. <laughs> hey, 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 awesome. No, I was trying to say that you you didn't know Karen, the term Karen until recently. Right? Was I? Um, I was Karen, or no, I'm sorry. That was a different I think I first was reading about it in the Root newsletter. You know, so where they have all kinds of great terms for middle aged white ladies. <laughs> I think I'm going to get a t shirt made saying, I am not, and just list them all. <laughs> I might look like it as a middle-aged white lady, but I'm not. Well, I mean, it, but it's also not just about age. It's about, I mean, because like, a Karen can yeah. actually be uh, just, it's, it's just associated with somebody who's obnoxious and rude and entitled um, and, you know, is so ready to call a manager, call the police, rat you out, you know, uh, but they at the same time are willing or, you know, uh, willing and able to bend the rules uh, according to whatever suits them. Uh, yeah. Basically, yeah. the rules don't apply to them. So you can be a young Karen, you can be an old Karen. This is Karen's of all flavors. Um, today's you Karen. Be, um, yeah, anyways, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, the Who's the chick that I hate? The black Karen? Yes. Um, yes. Jackie. Uh, Candace? No. What's her yeah. name? God. Yes, that one because you asked me. I know we got to put her name. Of, I think I just yeah. I mean, yeah, she's the one that's she's actually tweeted a lot about the same J.K. Rowling stuff about being born a woman versus you know like that that whole argument. So like she plays a big she's a big voice in that too because she's an asshole. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. I'll figure out her name as we keep keep talking. But anyways. Yeah. We'll we'll figure it out. Well, because we'll do. We'll, we're gonna we're going to devote an entire episode to her, um, just to ah. balance out, just to balance out the Karen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but in the meantime, today's Karen, Karen in Karen's corner. Wait for it. Do you know? Let's bring it up. Uh, so, Quinn, you tell tell me about this one while I tee this up because you you're the one that suggested it. So, so the reason why we're starting this one is. Um, and one of the reasons why I like this clip so much, and, and I'm, it's actually a pretty long clip, but yeah, it's kind of awesome because, and, and I think there have been a lot of times that I've been with you and people have bumped into you or, you know, some little microaggression that 
normally you wouldn't call out because it's it's more just like, you know what, I'm just gonna keep going. And what I love about this is that that didn't happen. So to tee it up, a white woman clipped uh, a 16 year old walking into a restaurant. And the mother of the teenager was like, yo, uh, you need to apologize to my kid. And this lady, I think had never, had probably been committing acts of microaggression for like her whole life. And it's a new day, man. It is a new day where you can't be an asshole to a person of color and get away with it. So that is what happened. And, um, and what I appreciate is that this mom was like, no, no, no. And really pushed um, and clearly made this lady uncomfortable. And, um, and it, it plays out and um, it escalates. Like it goes to DEF CON 5 really, really quickly. And I think it's pretty symbolic of, you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of people that don't want to get called out. And when they get called out, it takes them to such an uncomfortable place that they react in just a devastating way. Yes. Let's see if I can uh, roll a clip here. Uh, and I just fed it up to, to where. Oh my God. <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this woman went in her car because, you know, she's rolling strapped, like, gets her gun and pulls it on the woman. After she almost ran over the mom. I think the mom was in the, like, behind the car as it was pulling out um, to try and, I think she, she was either taking video or a picture of the license plate and the car backed up and almost hit her. And that's when things just went crazy. Yeah. It was like somehow that act flipped a switch. And again, like we saw with the chick who was in Central Park, like, you know, here's a white lady saying, call the police. Yeah, call the police, call the police. Cause I know the police will be on my side even though I'm brandishing a gun. Right. Right, that's that entitled Karen stuff. <laughs> oh, Karen. Karen. Oh, Karen, yes. And you know, um, just apologize. If you bump into somebody, just say you're sorry. Just say well, if you unless you did it on purpose, then you know what you did. You know what you did, and you just need to stop. You need a timeout. And I think that was uh, part of what the the part of why things got so heated. But um, in any case, it's it's. I mean, we were talking about that. There's there's shows on YouTube. There are people on YouTube develop uh, de devoting this topic of a Karen spotting, <laughs> as I'll call it, Karen spotting. It's, um, it's become a cultural, pop culture almost touch point, which uh, is great. I mean, I love it. And I know we talked about how, you know, there's been a million times that you and I have been somewhere and people automatically assume that you work there. Right. Most recently, as when you were visiting for Christmas, we were at The Gap and somebody walked up to you and said, I would like this in a size 16 or whatever. <laughs> and so the new response to that is, holding up the phone, this is my picture, picture of me and my dad, holding the phone. Um, I'd like you to ask me that again. And then yes. I'd like you to tell me why you're asking me that question and not the white lady standing next to me. Right. Like it's, an, I, it's terrible, but like there's part of me that is, there's just a reckoning, yes. there's a reckoning. And it's like, it's why I loved the Me Too movement because it's a reckoning and there's there is cause for pause now. There's a bunch of dudes out there that wanna say shit that they thought they could say a couple years ago, but they can't say it anymore. I've had so much fucked up shit said to me in my career that women that are 10, 20 years younger than me are never going to have said to them because it's not okay. I mean, I mean yeah. I mean, we, we'll, we'll do a whole episode. Just to we'll do a whole episode on that. Yeah, yeah. But like, it's it's right, like right. All, of the, all of these microaggressions and macro, but like it's, it's not okay because 
that brown skinned person that you thought you could micro be be microaggressive towards and that they just let you those days are over it's over fuck like that that's awesome camera's coming for you karen yes. camera is coming for you and Ken. Going down. <laughs> going down because you i mean ask what do what size you need it. or uh can i go get something yeah uh in the back um, yeah, your, your daughter actually saw that. And, um, and I think you were saying that, I mean, cause she, she, I mean, she was reacting to it because she had heard stories from you just based on uh, our going out and doing that. So for your, you know, 14 year old to see that, you know, yeah. it, it's unfortunate, but mostly good that she did, you know? So, um, because she's such a warrior and, um, yeah, and she's part of the good that will be coming into this world. So just buckle up, Karen. Buckle up, Karens of the world. Cameras are coming for you. Uh, I mean, I think, like, here's here's an interesting story. So three years ago um, at Jaden's school, so they were all 11. So that's what, fifth grade. There was an incident where uh, one, a white boy said to a black boy, do you know why God made black people? And... Uh, you know, Jaden's uh, friend Cameron was like, what? And it was something along the lines of like, he just wanted to see if skin could burn. It was some like super ignorant, some stupid racist, sure heard it from adults around kind of thing. And nothing happened. Mm. Nothing happened. And like, those days are over, right? Like those, that kind of bullshit, even at that little, that like micro level, like, Everybody at the school that's mostly white was like, you know, let's just, let's move on. Right. And the mom was like, no, we're not going to move on. We're not going to move on. How like, and, and sure enough, everything just kind of moved on. So like, that's anyways. Yes. And to that end, speaking of the reckoning and that those days are over, like Quinn said, that Karen, whose actual name was Jillian Wustenberg, age 32, and her husband, Eric Wustenberg, age 42, um, have both been arrested and uh, have both been charged with felonious assault, which carries a, a maximum penalty of four years in prison. Four years. Four years. Bye. Uh, so you thought you were going to be able to pull a gun and walk away now you got you now you're on blast because it's been seen by upwards of six million plus people. Uh, people know your names. Um, the husband was fired from his job at a university, um, and you're now facing four years. I mean, you'll probably get out because it's the legal system, and that's a whole other thing that needs to be worked out. But but yeah. the point is the point is you're not walking away clean. And okay. you know, as similar to a Karen from my past that also called a nine one one on me and ended up uh, with both of us going to jail. It's a small victory. We'll talk about that in a future episode. Yes. But this has been, but for now, this has been your Karen's Corner. <laughs> we will bring you more Karen's. This is, this is Karen's. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, now you're at uh, work. Karen. Um, yeah, we we'll come up with a sound effect or something. Well, we're gonna we're working it out here. We're working it out. But now we're rounding down, uh, winding down episode two. So two conversations from the compound. How are you feeling? You need a big woo saw after the, all the JK ness of it. Just release it. Because, like you said, there's, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of light around it. And it just gave us another connection point. Um, I love that you came over to the to the hairy side. <laughs> <laughs> Embraced your inner nerd. You know, got down with some butter beer with me. Uh, that was some good stuff. Um, hot or cold? Hot or cold? Butter beer. I like cold. the cold. I like the cold, uh, and and if we're going there, I like the frosty cold best. You Me know? too. Me I, too. I like the ice cream. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But um, the point is, uh, our our message to J.K. Go read your books. Go sit in a corner. You know what you did. 
go read your books and learn. And you're uh, listening to the wrong people. Yeah. There's a lot of voices out there, but you're listening to the wrong ones. Yes, and get help, you know, because it's been alluded to the fact that she may have gone through something, some type of sexual abuse or something. That's not an excuse. I'm sorry if that did actually happen to you. I understand. Yeah, it's, I mean, her essay read as just one, one more observation. It read as so personal. And it felt to me like she believes that if she had had the opportunity to become a man at a younger age, she may have saved herself from some kind of negative experience. That's That was like just an interpretation on my part. And um, God bless you for that. But like you're having the wrong conversation. Right. <laughs> the wrong right. set of motivations. Right. Right. Go work it out. Um, you've got all of, all the means in the world to get that help. All you know, make it happen. Um, but yeah. So um, I feel good about our, our episode working out the kinks. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for cross joining country us. compound. Cross, cross country compound. That's like our virtual. Yeah, that's related to a bigger compound idea that we'll share as well as we go. But um, thanks for joining us. We'll we'll come at you again. Be sure to like and subscribe and comment eventually when we release these to the world. Um, and Quinn, I love you so much. Thanks love for you. being in this journey with me. What are you doing? What are you going to do now? Um, Probably go have a cocktail. It's 5.30 Friday. Yeah, that's right. Cocktail. It's a it's a long, it's a holiday weekend, even though every day in COVID kind of feels like, <laughs> it's not like we can really, try. <laughs> it's yeah. not like, we, we, we get to yeah, get out. Yeah. So um, yeah, enjoy your cocktail. It's it's only about 2.30 my time. So I got, I got a couple hours to kill before cocktail. As they 30. say it's happy hour somewhere and it's that's happy true. hour here. That's true. Maybe I'll, we'll jump off of here and I'll join you for a virtual cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see you next time. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.